look, we have question number 8 in exercise 16.3 in the NCRT text. Three coins are tossed to once. Find the probability of getting you know, 12 sub questions. You have to answer to all these questions. And the random experiment is tossing of three identical pair coins once. Three coins are tossed once. To answer these questions, you have to write the sample space first. The first question is, what is the probability of getting three huts? Second one, getting two huts, etc. You have to answer 12 questions. So let us write the sample space. Three identical fair coins are tossed. So there is chance of getting all the three heads. Then it can be like this or like this or now we may get all tails. Then we may get so this will be the sample space. All the three heads, all the three tails, one tail and two heads. It can be this way, this way or this way. Here one head and two tails it can be this way or this way, this way or this way. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 outcomes in the sample space. Now, first part is probability of getting 3 heads. Only one chance. Therefore, answer is easy. 1 by 8. How? Probability of an event is number of favorable outcomes divided by divided by total number of outcomes in the sample space. That is 1 divided by 8. 2 heads. See, you have 2 heads here. 1, 2, 3. Therefore, the answer is 3 by 8. Then coming to the third question, that is, what is the probability of at least 2 heads? At least 2 heads. But we are not sure that whether we get 3 heads. No problem. Then, at least 2 heads. This is okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. For the first 4 occurrences, we have here 3, 2, 2, 2. Therefore, at least 2. It is satisfied. Therefore, 4 by 8, that is 1 by 2. Now, at most 2 heads. At the maximum, there can be two heads. At most, two heads. Therefore, we can exclude this one. Why? 
there are three heads. We cannot include this occurrence in our list. At most two heads. So the answer will be seven by eight. At the maximum, two heads. No problem, no problem, here no problem. There is no head. But we can account this also. Getting head is not a necessity. At most, there can be two heads. Suppose there is no head at all. It doesn't matter. Then. Number five, no head. No head. There is only one element. T, 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 tail, tail, tail. Therefore, the answer is one by eight. Then Three tails. So, turn occurrence is only once. Number eight. Then, exactly two tails. Here we have two tails, two tails, two tails. Exactly two tails. One, two, three. That is three by eight. Then no tail. That means all heads. Only one element. One by eight. Then at most two tails. At the maximum there can be two tails. At most. Two tails. So we have to explore this element T T T because in that occurrence there are three tails. Therefore the answer will be seven by eight. Now coming to 10, the requirement is probability of at least one head. There should be one head at least. If it exceeds one, no problem. Because the requirement is at least we shall explore this T T T in all the other seven occurrences we get at least one head then exactly one head number 11 exactly one head Probability of the occurrence in which there is exactly one head. One, two, three. That is three by eight. Then last one, at least one head tail. You have to get the probability in which there is at least one tail. We shall explore this first occurrence. In all the other seven occurrences, there is one or more tail. The 
necessity is at least one day before the answer can be seven by eight. So answer to the first is one by eight, second three by eight, third one by two, uh, fourth seven by eight, fifth one by eight, sixth one by eight, seventh three by eight, eighth one by eight, and ninth at most two takes, that is seven by eight, and probability of at least one hit, that is seven by eight, probability of exactly one hit, that is three by eight, and probability at least one tail is seven by eight. Right.